Just because you bailed Olivia out doesn't mean you own her. You can't hide her here forever. Buzz, Olivia does not want to see you because you and your sons abandoned her when Ava came after her. You know that's not true. Jeremy! Mrs. Spalding, will you please see Mr. Cooper to the door? Yes, sir. This isn't over. He's gone. I'm going to go down. Have an emergency meeting with my attorney. And have her file a motion to have your charges dismissed. Thank you, Alan. You are the mother of my granddaughter, Olivia. And I would do anything for Emma. You, when they arrested me, you need to forget about me and walk away, okay? I already know you're not perfect. I mean, who the hell is? Certainly not me. But I'm not going to abandon you when things get tough. I've done enough of that. Things are not tough for no reason. I have made them tough by making one mistake after another. Well, don't make the mistake of pushing me away, because it would be, so don't. We can figure this out together. It's fixable. What? What do you want me to do? You want me to go, oh, go to Ava and just ask her to forgive me that I was, tell her I was wrong? Would that be so awful? Yes! Why? Because I hate her! You've only known her for a year. How could you hate her? I hate her. I have hated her since before she was born. How? how I hate her because of how she was conceived. My mother always warned me about wanting to grow up too fast. She always got on me about it, but I, I didn't feel like I had a choice. I developed faster than the other girls. And... When I was in high school, all the college boys were asking me out, and I liked it. Buzz, I liked it. I liked the attention. It made me feel important, and they were so much more interesting and fun than the boys my age. So there would be nights when I would sneak out and go to a party or, or on a date. Did you tell your mom? <laughs> Are you kidding me? She'd growl me for the rest of my life. But one night, I heard about this party at one of the embassies, the ambassador's son was hosting it, and I thought, wow, you know. So I, I got dressed up, and I, I snuck out, and I went. And I have to tell you, it was amazing. It was so grand. The music was great. The dancing was amazing. And then there was this punch. It was a really hot night, and I just kept drinking it and drinking it. It was so sweet. The booze hit me all at once. I was dancing with this guy. It seemed very nice. He was fun, not like the other stiffs at the party. And all of a sudden, I felt like I was going to pass out. And I said to him, I just said, I, I, I want to lie down. And, and he said there were some bedrooms upstairs. And then he showed me the way. So he took my hand and, and, and led me upstairs and to this room at the end of this really long hall. And I, I got on the bed and, and he laid down next to me. Oh, my God. He was sweet. He was sweet. The way he held me and stroked my hair. He told me everything was going to be okay. He told me I'd feel better soon. And he started kissing me and I... I liked it. I liked it. Then he started touching me. And I knew things were going too far. I didn't want it, but I blacked out. And when I woke up, I was in the same bed, and my clothes were all messed up, and he was gone. I, I knew, I knew what had happened.
when you woke up, you were alone? You just gone? There was some guy in a suit throwing my purse in my face. I guess they figured out I was only 16. They let me leave through the back door, stuck me in a car and drove me home, practically shoving me out of it while the car was still in motion. So I didn't know where to get rid of me. Well, what did you do? Call the police? No. I was too ashamed. I mean, I, I shouldn't have been drinking. I shouldn't have been at that party. It doesn't give them the right to do anything to you. I know, but I was 16 and I was, I was scared and I, I didn't even know the name of the guy. You know, when I found out I was pregnant, the shame just got that much bigger. I mean, the thought of telling my mother. Then I got myself together. I got myself together and I got angry, Buzz. And I went back to the embassy because I wanted to tell them there was no way I was going to face the situation alone. And what happened? I, I spoke to a receptionist who spoke to someone else. And then the guy in the suit came back and he, he seemed very sweet and sincere. And so I told him. I told him everything. I told him what happened to me at that party. I told him that... I needed to see a guest list to see who had done this to me. I, I, I needed them to stand by me when I went to the police. And he, he listened. He listened very politely and, and looked very concerned. And then he, he left. And when he came back, he had an envelope full of cash. And he said that very, very, very politely that would ever believe my story, that I should take the money and get the hell out of there and never come back, that there was no way that they were going to stand by me. So that's what I did. I, I took the money and, and I, I left. And then I went home and I finally got up the nerve to tell my mother what happened because she's my mother and she's going to defend me and protect me. And all she could say to me was, I told you, I warned you. I told her I wanted an abortion. You know, I... But she said, no, 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 no. You'll carry this child to term and you'll, you'll give it away and there'll be no debate. This is the fight you told me about when Just she had the stroke? One minute you're yelling at someone and the next they're dead because of you. I laid in bed for days, weeks, and at that point it was too late to terminate the pregnancy. I was stuck. I was stuck with this thing growing inside of me that I resented and hated. And I hated it until I gave birth to it and got rid of it. And I spent the rest of my life just trying to forget. Just forget. And you don't understand. I understand. Are there two people you can't blame? Yourself and your daughter. It's not her fault. Where are you taking me? I'm taking you to see the second most beautiful girl in the hotel. Oh, no. Emma. I can't. Oh, no, I can't do it. No, 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 I can't do it. I'm not, okay. I'm not ready. I got a point. Give me a second. This oh, this my baby. I love her so much. Why? How can you ask me that? I just want to hear you say it. I love the light in her eyes. I love the way she smells when she's sleeping like she's having the sweetest dreams. I love it when she holds her arms out to me first thing in the morning like she can't wait to feel my arms around her. I love her laugh, and I love the way she calls me silly mommy. I love her. She's my baby. I can't get enough of her. If things had been different, that's the way it would have been with Ava. Stop. You them. can't compare Open them. your eyes. You have two daughters. They both deserve to be loved. Listen to me. No. Would you listen to me? Something happened to you that never should have happened to anyone. 
You had every right in the world to be bitter about it, to be angry about it. But the way you're dealing with this, believe me, it's just going to make it worse. Look, I need to talk to Miss Spencer. Listen, I'm not supposed to disturb This her. is very important, though, okay? You know what? Look, she's right there in the study. I can talk to her now. I can take it from here. Okay, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. You were a teenager. I mean, you had to go through what no one should have to go through. You were taken advantage of it by the son of a bitch, whoever it was. Yeah, whoever he was. It stinks! But you never asked for any of this. Your baby girl didn't ask for any of this. <laughs> Ava didn't ask for anything. She was a victim of the same circumstances. Hate what was done to you. 